Hey, everybody, this is Eddie from Talking Shit with Jim Jeffries and Eddie Ift. I'm here uh, to thank you for all your donations. They are tremendous. Roy currently is sending out all the T-shirts, posters, DVDs, everything. They are going out tomorrow for sure. If you're wondering where yours is, it's on its way. Uh, you guys have been great. Please continue to donate. If you haven't donated, please do. Uh, that's what keeps the show going. We love the support. We appreciate how much you guys have done for us. If you listen to our show all the time and you like the show and you want to see what's going on, Best way to do it is either go to our website, Jim and Eddie talk shit.com or our Facebook page. We have a fan page where everybody writes stuff and they go back and forth and we get called a lot of names and a lot of you aren't very nice to us. And you know what? It hurts. Really? It hurts. But guess what? We don't give a fuck. You can really help us out by going to Stitcher in the promo code, putting in Jim and Eddie. Go to the promo code on the Stitcher. You can find Stitcher on our website, Jim and Eddie talk shit.com. Go to Jim and Eddie talk shit.com. Click Stitcher, add the promo code Jim and Eddie. It's that simple. Right now, we're uh, with our guest, uh, Family Guy, Cleveland writer, uh, John Viner. Two douchebags on a couch. One's an asshole, one's a grouch. And relentless, oh! Hey everybody, welcome to Talking Shit. I'm Eddie Ift. I'm here with Jim Jeffries, Machete, Jesse. Uh, the hour of power is sitting here. And There's no little leak though, because <coughs> Jason's angry and upset her. No, uh, I don't think so. Well, wait one yeah. second. I want to introduce, we've got a guest tonight. Okay. We have uh, a good friend of mine from way back when in New York City, John Viner. He's a comedian, he's a writer. Uh, what show do you write for, John? Uh, I'm writing for the Cleveland show, the Family Guy spinoff. I used to work on Family Guy and left and went to Cleveland. What um, happened there? Did you, did you do something wrong on the Family Guy? Why did you go to the Cleveland show? Uh, well, now in retrospect, maybe I did something wrong. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it because you're black? Yeah. <laughs> There's did, a part of me, yes. Did, did they feel like you had that urban thing about you? I like the urban, so I wanted to, I wanted to see. I, I, you know, I was on Family Guy for six years, so and I, I loved working with Mike Henry, who plays Cleveland, and I wanted to see how that oh, show right, was. Right. So. You know, I, I've, I've dipped over. I watch all of them. I watch all three of them. Man. I just see them as one unit, those three shows. Ah, well, we don't, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just watch them. I like how they're in a cross. Like, I saw one the other day where, what's his name? The guy without the legs was in the American Dad one. Who was the one without the legs? Well, Joe in the wheelchair? Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe was walking in the family guy. Right. How'd, yes. <laughs> how'd they get him to walk? No, was, I think, he, I think, was, I think it's Stan, think, and they, they, the Stan is a similar design to Joe. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that was... Like, I like how I just asked, and how'd they make him walk? It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. <laughs> it's a cartoon, Eddie. <laughs> or is it the one with Quagmire behind him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So, no, no, that was the one where he did the theme song to American Dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was yeah. very good. I enjoyed it. I'll take full John credit. John walked into the house tonight to a giant argument between... Uh, We're going to do that in the next podcast. Yeah, but I just want to find out where Lolita is right now. I don't know. But did you get in a fight with her today? Yeah. Okay, so is there a possibility that Lalit is not coming to the show because I don't know. you yelled at Lalit? I hope not. Did you hit her? No, I was over the phone. I didn't. Did you, why did you hit her? I was on the phone with her. Okay. I didn't. Oh. Have you didn't ever have you ever have you ever yelled at Lalit? No. Did you did you redline with her like you did with me? No. You sure? Yeah. We have reports different. I told her to take care of yourself, like don't worry about me. And I hung up the but phone. she didn't. She didn't tell me because Jason's been evicted, which we'll talk about in the next one. She, <laughs> she, she didn't. Uh, it doesn't matter because last time we talked about the door, we couldn't do it because his landlord would get upset. You don't have one of those anymore, so yeah. we can talk about this. Um, but uh, she didn't tell me. I was with her. She assumed that me being your friend, you would have told me that you were evicted. She well, I didn't goes, want you to get upset. Was, she like, said I knew to that me, you would react like this." She said to me, "She said, oh, terrible news about that. She was concerned for you. So why'd you get angry at her?" Because it wasn't her place to tell you. Well, Jason, we're all friends. I expect if I told you something like I that. I would tell you did, did what's you, going did on. Did you expressly say, don't tell Jim? I didn't tell anybody. I told her right. and, and like one other person. Did you tell her not to tell Jim already? No, I didn't. Then why are you angry at her? Apologize to her. That's, that's horrible. Can you, you, can you, go, you, wanna, get, can you, you go get Lily? Do you want to live in a world where no one talks about you, who knows about you, and we only have conversations directly to you well, and not about personal. you when you're not in a room? personal information. It was the, but if you, didn't tell, if, you didn't, if you didn't tell her not to tell us, what did she do wrong? Why would you get angry at her? All right. Can you get Lily here? I can try. Well, right. go off well, and apologize. Go, 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 and, go and walk over there and apologize and try to get the leak come. And we'll talk to John. Huh? Did you talk to her? No, but no, we, we don't see her, her here. We don't see her. You're the one who gets why. 
Goodbye, Jason. And come back with, why Roy? You need alcohol. Doesn't it hurt a podcast if you just start dismissing members of the podcast? No, it doesn't. Oh, oh, there's shit. That was quick. How'd you do that, Jason? Not when you get rid of Jason. Jason's a very mild. It's it's like getting rid of the, like the jack in the back of your car. Yeah. Like you lose a little bit from the car, but unless the thing completely breaks down, everyone's going to be fine. Yeah. You're just going to have to call a tow truck. Yeah, Jason's like a flat spare tire. (laughs) Like you get him out like this will work. Oh no. This is shit as well. Thanks. Lily, we were worried about you. We heard Jason yelled at you. And uh, so now Lilith is in the room and Roy is here. He showed up with oh, alcohol. Good. That's why I Jay- was mad. I noticed as you were leaving to go find Lilith, you said, where's Roy? And you wanted Roy here because you knew Roy was bringing alcohol. That's what you wanted. That makes you feel good when you get evicted, doesn't it? You know, Al- alcohol makes the pain go away. <laughs> <laughs> Let he who has great sorrow drink and forget his sorrow. He, yeah. he quotes the Bible all the time, yeah. John. Ah. Let, let he who hasn't been evicted tell you you're a fat cunt. Um, let's talk about Brody. Uh, I don't think we should. I don't think any of us would talk about it in a derogatory way. We're all just trying to figure out what happened and what we know and what we can piece together. All I saw were that his Twitters were seeming to get um, very aggressive. They were funny, though. They were really funny. He was hashtagging. Did you see them? Yeah, I saw yeah. that. One. He kept hashtagging everything. I don't and understand what the purpose behind the hashtag is. The hashtag is to start a subject matter where, like, say you want to see something, like, one of his hashtags was Jew. <laughs> and, like, say you had a hashtag. I don't, I don't think he started that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think they've been talked about enough. Say, 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 <laughs> say, like, Hitler. <laughs> There's a few more of them gone. LOL, hashtag Jew. That's it. Yeah. If, if I were to write a Twitter about Jason and then I would hashtag hour of power, uh, a lot of other people could also write Twitters and hashtag hour of power. And then you would look up and a search hour of power and all the Twitters revolving around that would be there. Sure. So, so you could search Jew and see all Brody's comments. <laughs> right. But, but Brody is Jewish. Yes. Yeah. So... He was uh, self hating, evidently. Yeah, but he was. He he was. Uh, it was like I don't know if he was attacking people, and and he kept going after TMZ because I didn't know. He, does he work on TMZ? He did say. Oh, that's what I saw. A few fuck you TMZs. Yeah, Harvey Levin, fuck you. Wait, wait. So so Jesse uh, Jesse Shapiro, you you. How do you know what, what did he do on TMZ? I just saw that he hosted a like Harvey Levin was out one day, and I think he came in and was kind of acting as a pseudo host, but obviously it was a lot different. I didn't see it. I've seen like a clip of it, but it's pretty much him just being Brody on TMZ, which is just uh, odd. Know. Okay, yeah. so, so what I gather, Brody Stevens, if you don't know who I'm talking about right now, is he was a guest on our show. He's a funny comedian. He had Jesse's job at the Chelsea Lately show before Jesse stole it from him. <laughs> um, Brody. Have you seen the hashtag? <laughs> Fuck Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he used to warm up. He does a lot of warm up, but he, uh, he also apparently has a show in development with Zach Galifianakis he, he, he's producing. He's best known from The Hangover 2 being the security guy <laughs> to, to Paul Giamatti. But within the comedian world, he's known among all comedians because he's a really funny uh, kind of a comics comic. And uh, he, uh, he was even on the comics comics. And, like the, They're the ones, all these Twitter's going, you have to follow Brody Stevens right now. Well, and I think that was the weirdest part is that people weren't sure whether this was just like a big spectacle, like kind of like an Andy Coffin Cop- yeah, an Andy Andy Cop- 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 type thing or whether it was like he's actually having a mental breakdown. And so I think that was what... You know, and you had Rogan and other people also. Can I, can I check? Did he get evicted during this or something? <laughs> or did he just still pay his rent? What did, what did Rogan say? I think he still has it. Well, Rogan was like, this is like the best piece. He twittered something like, this is the best piece of performance art. You guys relax, da 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 Or something to that effect, not word for word. Well, and so I think people uh, weren't really sure which way it was going. I figured because Zach Galifianakis was involved, it was probably like a stunt for so the show I. that yeah, he's so producing. Yeah. And, but the, it still might be. I'm not sure it's not. Like you're saying that you know someone who knows him quite well, Jesse. Yeah, from what I've heard, uh, it's it's actually, uh, you know, it's not a performance art piece. It's him kind of losing it. Now, John Viner, you've directed him in a film before. <laughs> I, I have. <laughs> I don't know if I directed him. I was, I was in a film opposite him uh, 12 oh, yeah, years you, ago. Oh, yeah. What was the name of that? I remember. Road to Park City. <laughs> yeah. He was very good. That was a funny, yeah, he was. Um, Panavision trucks down there. 
you got to see him. It's a Treat Williams vehicle. He remembers the lines. This is. Uh, I don't even know the film. Well, that's you're, you'd be one of eight hundred people if you did remember the film. Oh, okay. Uh, John starting a film. We'll, we'll explain what it was. It was funny. Oh, we did a movie about a guy trying to make a film to win Sundance, and we didn't get into Sundance with the film. <laughs> uh, we got into Slam Dance though. It, it was fun. So yeah, it was like a, a mockumentary uh, about you know three years too soon, and then all of a sudden or. You know, then everything is yes. Talk to the camera. Yes, now make everything it is verite. Yeah. But literally, I would take it around, and people would be like, "I don't know, is this real or not real?" And I'm like, "But you were laughing. That seemed real. <laughs> you seemed to be enjoying yourself. Was that real?" But uh, <laughs> and Bro- Brody plays a uh, like a what was he? He's just a PA. Yeah, he was a PA. He's basically <laughs> locking. He, he, we had in the, on the corner of the uh, Flatiron Building in New York, and just as if he was locking it down. So one guy is going to close off the, and so it's just me trying to cross the street and he doesn't let me cross. The and street. he's going, we've got a treat Williams vehicle down there. What's a treat. Williams? Treat Williams is an actor that hasn't been in anything. in. no, he was in, uh, what was the Everwood? Yeah. And I think he's on a show now, but what, what was the movie? He did he Re- Remo Williams. Oh no, that, that wasn't, that was Fred Ward. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's Fred Ward. But anyway, I don't know if I want him backing me up, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what the rules are in this room. No, no, you can do whatever you want to Jason, oh, okay. uh, but, but Brody, Brody wouldn't let him past him. And he's like, there's people walking everywhere. And Brody's like, can't go. We're locking it down. And uh, he goes, can't, and he goes, but I don't see anything there. And he goes, Panavision trucks. <laughs> and his cadence is, uh, <laughs> It's amazing. He just he, takes over. He references a lot of things. Yeah, no, he, but he's Lewis right. Schaefer does that. Maybe too. he's not even that mad. Maybe there's someone just thought because of the way he talks. I think we're like, all pretty is he much straight, close is he to straight that. jacket mad or is he just having a relaxing time? Because well, there people, was there was I, one. I, I've had people that I know personally, even people in my family over the years that have had uh, mental breakdowns. I think yeah, you know, I think everyone gets close to it. I don't think there's any any shame in that. From I mean, from what I've heard, Brody's always been a little bit crazy, but that's part of his personality. Yeah. And, but I mean, I think this one it, it got a little bit crazier than normal. He uh, there there was something. One of the twitters was like, "Fuck you if you don't believe that picture's real." Those are really handcuffs. Like there was a picture of like him being. What they put him in a mental home, but he's still allowed to Twitter. What, what is? <laughs> this? I think he's what only been this? there. A little, I don't understand what's well, happening. He stopped twittering for a couple of days, and then now it looks like he's got. They computer access. Yeah, he's got he's got a cell phone or something that he. Yeah, can I don't think with. he should be allowed that in the mental home. I, yeah, I, I was kind I of think, wondering I about that. I think they myself. should take the internet away from you, or just put the internet from five years ago yeah. on the computer. <laughs> a safe like, web. You I'll, just I'll, get information and news stories from five years ago, and that's the only thing you're fed. So you feel comfortable <laughs> because you've already reacted to this news once in your life, and you can handle it. Yeah. I had a Saddam friend. Hussein's dead. I had a friend recently go to rehab, and he was telling me before he went in. He, they, he has to give up his phone. He's not allowed to have his iPad, his computer. He's not allowed to bring magazines, not be on the phone. Yeah, it like, depends what rehab you're in, though. I know someone who's in rehab now who is allowed to go out on the weekends <laughs> and, and gets massages all day and just fucking plays Scrabble. It depends which type you're this, going to. This sounded, that would make me use drugs. Like, I, I just drink now, but if I went to rehab and I couldn't have a phone... Or, or an iPad or a computer. I'd yeah, start but it depends, using drugs. It depends. Like if it's the phone, then you can call the people who are making all the bad decisions with you or for you. You know, you, I understand that completely. It's a codependent detox. Yeah. Oh, it's a codependent detox. See, um, Lalit here, John, is a professional therapist. Ah. But yeah, she's used, the craziest of all of us. used to work in uh, rehab um, as a drug therapist. Yeah. And now... Dual diagnosis. Treats Jason on a daily basis. And yeah. When we say treats, she takes them out for drinks. Is now, it working? Jason said something to me before. Jason said, because I, I was ripping into him about, about how he has to get a job, and I said, you can't just have me and the elite and everyone feed you all the time. He goes, no, not true with the elite, because me and the elite, we, we have go meal, 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 meal. I pay for half of them. Is this correct, Lee? He said, you can ask her. Um, he has paid for my meal a few times, yeah. Many, but I mean, many? I pay more than you do, I think. For oh, sure. do you? Yeah. Well, the last and you come over all the time. <laughs> well, the, you come over and you like, go last... straight to my fridge. You're like, what do you oh, have? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the eyes. So, so what do you reckon the percentage is? Would he pay for 20%, 30%, 50%? Okay, here's the thing. Even if he pays, like he pays for in and out and I'll pay for like 
Casablanca. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Your, your, yeah. your favorite extra restaurant, he'll buy you a double double yeah. for two ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. When you get to Seven Eleven, he's like, "I got it." Yeah, exactly. He's I'm like, up, "Do you want the combo? I'm up on the hot dogs. <laughs> So what, what percentage of meals do you think you pay for, Jason, out of those two? Well, I guess there's a scale, too. So, I mean, I, 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 you know, do, do I have to quantify, like, the difference in the meal value, too? What percentage in, this, in money, then? I that, have, that's an exact percent. Come on, you know. You keep a little, you keep a little if, cash. Let's say, let's say if she spent $100 on you over a week, how much did you spend over a week on her? Well, according to her, 40 <laughs> 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 or less? No, a hundred. How many? How many, in, how many double doubles does this bitch eat? Come on, a hundred, a hundred to forty. What, what's that? Like thirty-two percent, thirty percent. That's assuming well, you forty would to hundred seems like forty percent. I'm a <laughs> mathematician. That'd be forty. Yeah, 40, that'd be 40 yeah, that'd be like thirty-two dollars, thirty, thirty-three. Now, Jason, last night uh, when I told you who our guest was today, I forgot to tell you, I, called, I, went, I told you this, but uh, I called Jason over the weekend or I texted him. I was with Luke the Albino in San Francisco, and Luke was telling me how good he looks in a suit. Yeah, uh, look, albinos, <laughs> um, there's not a lot they look good in, but they do look good in a suit. They sort of look like someone who's been at court and there's been a guilty verdict and they're really shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke says, no, I look good in a suit. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like to wear a suit that often, but I do. He goes, are you a suspenders or a belt person? And I go, I'm, I'm a belt. And he goes, I'm a suspenders. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I wonder what Jason is. <laughs> and I go, Jason doesn't wear Neither. suits. He, he refuses. So he goes, I wonder what he'd be, because he, Luke thinks he's Jason. He loves Jason. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I text Jason, I go, hypothetically, if you were to wear a suit, would you be a suspenders or a belt person? And Jason responds back, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> So what was your thinking? I was just trying to be a team player. You no, know? No, no, I'm no, going no. along with whatever. He didn't offer you a suit. This is what you saw in that text. Eddie's getting me a suit. That's what you saw. All these years that you've gone, oh, I'll never wear a suit. As soon as one was offered, not even when it was offered, when there was the smell of an offer, you fucking snapped it up. You and, would wear a suit in a heartbeat. And then I told you about our guest. And what did you say? I'm not wearing a suit for him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, did you do your research on John? Oh, yeah. I mean, I asked him, you know, he asked me, uh, basically our favorite scene is the one that you did. Uh, Weren't you involved in the... Uh, the the uh, vomit? The, the vomiting vom scene. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was part of that pitch. I, that's that, my, I think it was in Patrick Megan. That's my favorite thing in TV history. Yeah. I love <laughs> that. Didn't I it get I awards it or something like that, too? I, I did that cry. win awards? I don't think it won awards. There's got to be some kind of like... Cartoon. They even I have did on you, the Family Guy pinball machine. No, I mean like internet guys. mode. They do. They have a vomit mode. Well, there's a lot of you, vomiting on, where, but you on keep, the show. Where, no, but where you do that scene where he goes, hey, we're going to eat, drink this stuff, and then like you got to hit the bumpers and it's, bleh, bleh. it's fucking, that's the best thing about the Family Guy pinball machine. Norm MacDonald has a Family Guy pinball machine. <laughs> do you, uh, it does. when yeah. you write your episodes, do you ever put in like stuff from uh, like real life that's happened to you and stuff? And Oh, yeah. Or, or, or like names. Have you ever used a name like Seinfeld does of people? Yeah, we do that. We, I, I think for the most part, we try not to do it, but uh, you know, occasionally. Actually, I was mentioned in an episode when I was off on script, and I came in, and it, I was uh, someone gets a free boob wash from Doctor John Viner or, something. <laughs> or boob job. Sorry, not boob wash. Uh, <laughs> yeah. don't, I was like, how much does a boob wash yeah, yeah, yeah. cost? You don't, need, you don't need a doctor for that. No, no, even no. Jason's qualified for that. <laughs> actually, you wouldn't. He'd bring no, a Brillo pad. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, we, we use our, our real lives. A lot of uh, stories come out of, you know, stuff that's sometimes very personal to people, you know, like, <laughs> you know. Like the scared you in the front yard. That's, that might, that would know, have happened in real life somewhere. <laughs> that may have happened. But yeah, no, I mean, like if you, you can come in with the worst possible story of, you know, an amputation or a sex change or anything and people will be like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then they write it down and they, you know, it becomes the next episode. <laughs> often, often when I'm in an interview and I get told off for doing an AIDS joke or a cancer joke or something like that, I use the Family Guy as my, but they did on the Family Guy. It's okay if that's on major TV. We, I, what did we I use? I use that uh, as we, my excuse sometimes. We used The Office that time. Remember we were in a meeting and they were telling us our, our script was too dirty or something because it involved hookers. And then they had the herpes yeah, episode. Yeah, and then we used the, the, uh, the herpes, or, yeah, the herpes episode of The Office. That was our reference point. Well, they did herpes. They can, we can, we can have, uh, a hooker well, it's, it's like when I did my Coney Central um, script and in the end it went down to I had a 
guy with muscular dystrophy in the script. And the people at Comedy Central said, no, you can't. That's too tragic. And I said, why? And they go, look, it's just too tragic. And I go, well, what can you give me? And they said, <laughs> they said paraplegic. And I went, not scared, not, not. Not fucking dark enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I go, I go, uh, I go. I, I need, I need someone where I can comb their hair where, against their will. <laughs> <laughs> and they went quadriplegic, and I went, deal. All right, we're in. <laughs> yeah, muscular dystrophy. It's so a wonderful sadder. business. Yeah, it really is. Especially I'll give when, you this. especially when they're picking your. What's that? When I did my Comedy Central special, they took my whole script, and uh, it had to go through three levels. It had to go through advertising. Uh, standards and practices, and uh, legal. And it was funny, uh, standards and practices and legal weren't that tough. It was hard getting past advertising. You know, they were like, you can't, you can't use this, you know, you can't use Toyota, you got to use this, or you can't use Avis, you got to use Hertz. And uh, they said, but I had this one joke about hitting a girl, and I said, or it was beating a girl. Sounds or, hysterical. I'm and they said, you can't say beat. Can can you say hit? And I was like, well, <laughs> What's the difference? What's it? And they go, We have a policy here at Comedy Central about beating women. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, all right. So so I had to change it to hit. And then uh, they said, You can say nigger. We're gonna bleep it, but you can't say n word. Yeah, then, we've had that. Then they out. know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I, I got to tell you, the person who just sent me the text is the person I told you that was in rehab, and the text is just read. I have a new roommate. Her name is Crystal. She does meth. True story. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> That's true. That's pretty funny. Wow. Anyway, sorry for cutting you off. I just got that. Well, it's too funny. I can't think of anything now. I just want to know more about Crystal. Yeah, we'll find out more about Crystal in the coming episodes, I'm sure. <laughs> What the? <laughs> don't I, you don't. I'm gonna watch that later. Is I don't. This the Bachelor. Now, now I know. Oh, no, this is a, now I know that the kitchen. red team won the first um, task <laughs> because the blue team have to rope. Now you fucked that up for me, Roy. Roy Ray. Do you really watch <laughs> that show? Just, oh, I love he, cooking shows. He. It's all he does is watch cooking Gordon shows. Gordon Ramsay. I love cooking shows. And now he's gotten into cooking, which is a real nightmare because he cooks in the kitchen and then he doesn't. You did clean today. I did. Yeah. That's I, the first time you've ever. No, I don't. No, I cooked for you and you cleaned up after me, but I still delegated it. I, I don't I don't buy the the idea of I do the cooking so someone else has to do the cleanup because the cooking's fun and the cleanup sucks. No, but no one ever cooks for me. Yeah, but I yeah. See, I get what you're I saying. I don't know if that's what you're but doing. I but I also like, purchase the food. Okay. Yeah. And then everybody else eats this it. This isn't me having a dinner party. Watch this, though. This is gotcha. just some John, cunt coming over to the house. John, watch if this. If I had a dinner party, completely different. Jason, if we fed you every Jason's day. Jason's never cleaned up after me. Oh, that's not true. Yes, it is. When do you clean sausage rolls? Where do you I, clean? I, I've done the dishes here a lot, actually. Yeah, Jason, yeah. would you, if we fed you I, every single day, three meals a day, but you had to clean up after every meal, would you take that deal? Sure. See, see so you're see, wrong. See, John, you're your wrong. theory's wrong. <laughs> but that's just a theory. No, like, <laughs> you said not to trust anything he says. True. <laughs> when did I say that off air? That's brief. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, Jim, I've, I've done the dishes for you. Uh, not every often. time. Not every time, no, but I do them. I mean, you know I do them. Do Sometimes I just do them, even if I haven't had the meal. Oh, I don't you you look like a sh like a shell of a man right now. You look like you have just been beaten down. I'm why? You just because I beat him down before the podcast. You, it's either because you're really high, um, you're intimidated by our guest. He's angry with the late. He did some he, research. He did. Some There's research. a lot. There's a lot of elements. You and got, I'm just floating you, like a leaf in a stream, man. I'm just here. You got evicted. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. A leaf that doesn't have a So you guys, so you are the MC for the live Wait performance. Wait a minute. You're not family you're guy. not doing an hour of power. <laughs> I saw the you, live performance. So you you guy. you I were the announcer that on that. He, oh, you didn't. So these guys yeah, did a live much. show. I mean, you know, This was pretty, sorry, this was about what's that gonna say five years ago? Yeah, we've done a bunch over the best the best experience of all of them was we did Carnegie Hall about three years ago. Oh, that's awesome. And that was yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah. and uh, just to give you some insight on my psyche, uh, people's parents, you know, flew in from California to see their children perform. My uh, parents live in New York and, and were on their way out of town uh, the day before and they're like, It's fine, it's fine, we'll just miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it, they, said, they said it's not really your night. It's a whole bunch of people. I mean, oh, you no. are performing by I would yourself. like to give a shout out here, actually. <laughs> and this is nothing to do. And I, I, I don't hang out with the guy, but I'm a big fan of the bloke. And, um, and I, I consider him to be a peer. Uh, 
But Bill Burr uh, has just booked Carnegie Hall, and congratulations! Oh, congratulations! On that. oh, that's great. That's uh, that's a that's a big step step in anyone's career, and he deserves it. So. Um, I back to what you were saying. So you're looking for an opening act, I guess. So you want to be? No, I wanna, I, <laughs> hey Bill, if you're listening, I, I, we you got mark your my guy. words. I'll do Carnegie Hall in the next uh, <laughs> twenty years, whether it be a bank job or what. Joe or Joe Matarese, uh got <laughs> to play Carnegie Hall, and because uh, he was opening for uh, Artie Lang, and he said he was really excited. It was like a big deal, and uh, he gets on, and you know Artie's fans, the Howard Stern fans, they start. They start heckling him so badly. And he said at one point, he goes, you know, it's bad. When he yelled back, my parents are here, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one thing. I would fly my parents out if I did something like that. Wembley or Carnegie Hall or something like that. I, there's, a, I, there's a few venues. And I don't know why. Because I've played big theaters before. But there's something about certain things have a name. Where you go, well, like your parents. I, I had my that. parents come up when I did my special in New York City. My parents came up, and it was so funny. We were we stayed in the hotel that was where the Hudson Theater is, and we did uh, you do the Hudson Theater? Yeah, that's and, a three thousand seat theater. No, it's it? not. It's only like a thousand. What, what am I thinking of? And uh, Beacon. We, we we took them. I took my parents in. We were walking by. I'm like, oh, come on, I'll show you where where I'm going to do the show. And we walked in the day before, and my mom looks up and she goes, "It's not very big." <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm looking at our website right now. My Australia tickets are on sale now. If you're listening in Australia, you can get tickets in my Melbourne. Melbourne. I just called it Melbourne. No one's coming now. Melbourne. Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Sydney. They're on sale right now on alist.com.au. Mine, you- mine would be on sale now. After I read yours, I rang my Australian manager and said, why are my tickets not on sale? And he said, we haven't negotiated the price yet. This is how little I do with my career that I'm going out to Australia and I don't even know what I'm getting paid. Yeah, I never it's know. Gonna show up. I never know what I'm going to do. you tour anymore? Do you do a stand up at all? I, I haven't done, done stand up in a while. Like how long? Probably since I opened for you in San Diego. <laughs> can I, can you tell him where we, where we did a comedy show? Uh, no, it was we, he, he called. He's like, do you want to come down and do this thing? I'm like, yeah, I'll go to San Diego. I invited some friends out. And it was like, yeah, come see us in 65B. And I was like, what does that mean? And it's like, so we're driving around storage <laughs> units. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, it's not even 65A. I got the smaller 65. We did comedy in a storage unit. This guy set up this, like, comedy club, he called it. And he kept bugging me to come down, come down. And finally, I'm like, all right, I'll fucking come down. And I was like, John, you want to come with me? He's like, yeah. So we drive down there. And I'm like, are, are they fucking kidding? Like, they rent it out, like, where you would put your shit. Sure. And, uh... And you go in, and they weren't. They didn't have a liquor license, so they were selling like, like drinks. You brought your girlfriend at the time, yeah. And uh, and I was ashamed. Was not like, impressed. Don't, don't yeah. call her a slut or something. You might be married now. No. And you know, uh, <laughs> and no, uh, she left me immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> after he t- he's like, "Come see me do stand up." Found some guy in fifty four B. Oh, I thought you were a comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like some of the storage units had people sleeping in them. It was not. Can I, can I ask you something? And because I think about this a lot, do you miss being a stand-up? Do you miss it, or are you happier now? No, I, I mean, I, I have to start getting back up. I, I, I do miss part of it. I, you know, personally for me, I've always been sort of more story-driven, and I love shooting shorts. And when when we started out doing stand-up, I gravitated toward doing sketch. And so, yeah, but you were a good stand-up. He's really, really funny, and uh, you were you were incredibly offensive at the time when it like. It was the. It was like we started back when PC was the thing, and then you were really offensive, and you were like ahead of your time. And Before hacks like me came along and ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you you definitely try to to push buttons just to to try things out. And I and I I wound up actually. I remember I did all these like Puerto Rican jokes and all this stuff. <laughs> and at some point, I was like, and black jokes, and I was like, I can't keep doing them. And so I wound up like Lisa Lampanelli took some of my jokes, and I was like. As long as I can give jokes away and other people do them, then it would look like I'm stealing and I can't do them anymore. So I, you know, I, I changed my act. And, and uh, you have the best story. Do, do you remember your tape recorder story? Oh, this this is the worst comic I've ever. Seen. <laughs> we don't know if that's what it was, but uh, you know, because uh, comics would tape record their sets back in the day. You'd have a tape recorder. I, this, this guy, I was with a guy this weekend who videotaped every single minute he did and I, i've never been a guy does he go home and watch it yeah a lot of guys the people do. they go home and watch yeah, it yeah. i can't watch a second of me i, no, I know that's the problem either. is that you you tape yourself going i'm gonna watch this and then you turn it on you're like this guy's yeah. terrible yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but John, John put his tape recorder in the back of the room to record his set, went up and did his set, and then when he was playing it back to listen to it, he heard a guy in the room go, this is the worst comedian I've ever seen. <laughs> it was a woman who said that, just to make it very clear. I've done that to comics, though. Like, when they're taping, I go up next to it and say it, so it could have been a comic. I, I, had, yeah, the, I had the best uh, backhanded compliment ever i was sort of hanging out in the alleyway at the back of the gig this weekend just sort of talking to a couple of people smoking out there and just just stand out the back and uh i was behind this little wall and this couple were going back to their car from their their gig from the gig and the woman said to her husband well if you think that you're a fucking idiot right and he went no nah, i think he's a genius you're a fucking moron so i was like oh that guy thinks i'm a genius <laughs> <laughs> See, it's good you can dwell on that. I would, I'd be worried about her. No, that. I like the fact that they had an awkward car ride home. I, I, I love that one where he's sitting there. So you find raping kids funny, you know, that, that conversation. <laughs> Somebody wrote me, uh, and uh, it's always the pedophile jokes. I always get the message. You know, you might have been funny and you might have got laughs, but pedophile jokes aren't funny. And I'm like, oh. Geez. No, pedophilia is not pedophilia. funny. Pedophilia. Pedophile jokes are funny. There's a big difference. This is what pisses me off with people. It's like, it's like, it's like if you're saying a joke's a joke. I, I believe anyway. But you know, what do we? I had a couple of girls San Francisco this weekend. Uh, by the way, thank you guys who showed up. There were a lot of talking shitheads that showed up, and some strange ones at that. Um, but uh, they no, they were really good. And then uh, one of them came out. And he's like, man, you were so fucking funny. That was the funniest show I've ever seen. And he leaves. And uh, the guy that's talking to me at the time goes, that guy that just said that, he was asleep during your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just get people that come up to me and go, can you punch Jason? When I, buy I, get, I get a lot of that. People and I, like, I, sign, I sign my DVDs now. People ask for this. I don't do this all the time. Jason sucks. Or I, Jason. I write on my CDs, Jason's a fat cunt. Yeah, yeah. People, I, we've never discussed this, but people actually, and I, I, I imagine in a few years when Jason's long forgotten from this show, people are, like, that people are going to go, what have you, why have you got Jim Jeffrey saying that Jason's, or someone's going to have a friend called Jason, they're going to pull that DVD up, feel disappointed. <laughs> uh, I had two girls walk out of my show towards the end of my show, and uh and I said, I was talking about China at the time. And I said, well, you're not Chinese. What are you upset about? Or blah, blah, blah. Why are you leaving? She goes, it was the retard jokes. And I go, that was the second joke. <laughs> You've sat through like another 40 minutes and finally decided to leave. So a guy came up to buy a CD after the show. And he goes, I want to buy it for the girl that left. And I go, do you know her? He goes, yeah, I'm friends with her. And I go, why did she leave? He goes, well, she's a special ed teacher, and her and the other girls that left with her. They, they joke the most. I know, but then she, then he goes, I go, come on. He goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, she'll get it. She'll get it when she's on her own. He goes, they're also lesbians. <laughs> he goes, you made fun of lesbians. Yeah, no, le <laughs> lesbian. I've always, I don't understand why lesbians are moody in the, in the fact that they're in the lowest STD risk category. Like gay guys, every time they're bumming, they're thinking, I could die right now. You have a casual <laughs> night of fucking someone in the ass after going out. You, you cock's in there going, this could be the end of me. I'm enjoying myself, but this could be bad news for me in the future. We're lesbians. No one's ever gotten an STD from bumping cunts. You can, you Tribbling. Can, you I bet can, you could get it from tribbling. You can smear cunts together all day. You can pass on a, a wart here and there, but no one's ever getting the hiv. So is this, this is technically accurate? <laughs> <laughs> all right i just don't want to know for sure but. no i heard it on a podcast yeah, you know, yeah. no no the guy's a professional comic <laughs> in saying that I, I watched the family guy like a documentary so um i uh i think you can pass it along tribbling how i like to use that word you need to you need to yeah, tear skin that's why that's why anal sex gives you puts you in the higher category because you need to get skin and that's why black guys because there's a lot of skin tearing because the Big cocks. Everyone's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just it, we didn't know we were going to get an education tonight, Jim. Tearing, tearing, <laughs> tearing skin is where AIDS comes from. It doesn't come from your fluids. It comes from. I know. I, I read that about Haiti and uh, and Africa. They said why are the AIDS rates so much higher down there? And they said because they uh, they uh, they fuck a lot. 
Like, fuck <laughs> yeah. No, they said that because uh, they have all these other STDs, so there's already wounds down there. And so when yeah. the skin tears, and in like African countries, uh, it's, herpes is a gateway STD. Yeah, it, <laughs> they, they like to, they like to do it raw without without uh, the woman being wet, and so there's they strength. say that about Africa. Yeah, that there's a lot of dryness. Yeah. Involved. Do you do you remember uh, remember our driver in South Africa? Hey, I'm a bad, I'm a bad man. That I'm one. a bad man. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. We had this we had this driver that would drive us to and from the the resort to the to the venue, the casino where we were performing. And uh, he would do Nelson Mandela impressions all day to us. Good ones. Yeah, he was good. You'd think Nelson was driving it. <laughs> you would. It was fan. He looked like Nelson Mandela. I'm not going to say they all look the same, but this one looked like Nelson Mandela, and he did a fantastic impersonation. And he would he would ask us. He was the nicest man. He in the would world. ask us all the time. Do you look at the stars or do you look at the grass? That's that's how we would ask you if you were gay or not. <laughs> <laughs> if you looked at the grass, you were gay. <laughs> and uh, so, if you're looking at the stars, you're on your back. You're letting the woman do all the yeah. work. Yeah, and if you're 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 looking at the grass, you're getting it from behind. Gotcha. Yeah, or you or you're giving it to someone from behind, looking over their shoulder yeah. Yeah. onto the grass. So he asked us. But you could be doing a guy from behind and looking up in the air. True. Yeah, but that's not how they do it in South Africa. Yeah, you're, I don't know. You, you, you're culturally. So then his name was. <laughs> so his name was Benny. Then Benny. One night he was driving just me home, and he goes, he goes. Do you want to uh, look at the grass? <laughs> he goes. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. How, how many times? Because you're gonna. He goes. How, how many times do you fuck a night? And I go, I don't know. One if I'm lucky. And he goes. Uh, I go. How about you, Benny? He goes. Mm, about ten. <laughs> And I go ten times. You're fucking ten times a night. And he goes, yeah. He goes once with my wa- uh, once with my wife, nine times with my girlfriends. Wow. And I go, what do you mean? Like he lives in one of those. The lead is not real. He lives in those shanty towns, and he, he was telling me he's like, I just have sex with my wife, and then I go visit my girlfriends around town and fuck them. And I'm like, Penny, aren't you worried about getting AIDS? And he's like, My brother has AIDS. <laughs> my other brother has AIDS. He's like, My sister has AIDS. And I'm like, uh, Benny. Uh, uh, how about you? <laughs> you? You doing okay? He's like, oh, I don't have AIDS. I'm like, well, if you fuck ten times a night, I go, do you wear condoms? And he's like, no. no. In, a, in a shanty town, Benny's dead now. <laughs> that, we, we we met five years ago. Benny hasn't have been long for this world. <laughs> You've been to those shanty towns. Even if you didn't get AIDS, you get some type of like stomach bug, just walking around them. Yeah, it was pretty. Sp- did, have you ever have you ever been to South Africa? I have haven't. You, have I you haven't. got AIDS? I don't think so. <laughs> no. All right. well, you don't think so? Well, at any given moment, you don't know. Yeah, you, you do when you get your test back, or you, yeah, yeah. But then, who knows? I mean, he, I, just, he, he just cut his hand open, and I said hi. I mean, it might be over <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, you got a wife? You got a girlfriend? Was no, I, I, I I'm presently single. So, Mila Kunis, you ever tried to hit that? Uh, in the way that his joke was about, uh, <laughs> no, like, like I should have beat that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I have not uh, hit on her, but she's very friendly. She's like nice. my favorite girl in the world. I would love to go out with her. She's, uh, she seems so nice. Jim, yeah, she's, and, she's very uh, down to earth. Yeah. You have a girlfriend, Jim, and you're never going to be able to go out with a girl ever again. No, I was Why just you saying, yourself I'm just saying fight? famous people in the world where you go, you know, you, I can't say that. Nope. All right. You've decided to be in a relationship and be a boring human being. All right. Okay. So you don't find other women attractive now that you have a girlfriend? I find every single one of them attractive now. And you, and you wouldn't like to have sex with them or anything? I want to have sex with every single woman I see now. Right. That's how it goes, isn't it? People always go, people always go to me, they go, are you a leg man or a breast man? And I'm like, whatever my girlfriend doesn't have. I'm one of those men. I'm a vagina man. I like the vagina. I like a nice looking vagina. Yeah. And how would you describe that? You know, I like I like the flaps to be not too meaty inside, a nice sort of thing, a clitoris that just pokes out the top but doesn't overpower the vagina. You just okay. talked about it like Gordon Ramsay yeah. would talk about like shrimp, shrimp Provencal. <laughs> and I like a viscosity which is wet and sort of thick but not Vaseline and not one that leaves white on your cock. You know those ones that you have and it leaves a bit of whiteness. And you're like, where did that white color come from? What's that? that? That's called yeast. 
Yeah, I don't like that. So you're angry at your girlfriend about the yeast. <laughs> I hate that white shit. <laughs> How long when, have you been together? We've been together for 10 years. It's been I, I hate when she spreads her legs and it looks like a grilled cheese sandwich opening. Oh. Wow. Yeah, Jesus, Eddie. I don't know why I asked the question. I yeah, apologize. Eddie, Eddie, Lily, what kind of... That type of comedy, you're going back to storage areas. Lily, <laughs> <laughs> Lily what kind of vagina do you have? The ones that um, are nice. No, not the ones that are nice. That means you have several vagina. <laughs> tell us, tell, put the microphone to your mouth. All right. Now, now what, what, if you were to describe the vagina, what would it look like? Uh, a pear. That's disgusting. Who would ever, <laughs> who would ever want a pear-shaped like vagina? Like a shiny pear? A what? Shiny I understand pear. it. I, I understand it. It looks like an, I think it's, it's, it's fit and tone just like. Is. Not in a <laughs> don't pull don't pull the picture up, Roy. <laughs> pull, pull it up. Pull pull it up. up. Oh, every time and we have to look Perry. at There yeah. she is. There's Lily. I don't wow. get to see my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> a pair That's of hair. Terrible. Now what type of hair maintenance do you have, Lord? Razor. Ra- razor. Do you leave a strip? Yes. Right. Why do you do that? Why do you leave that? Uh because I like to look at it like that. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. I like yeah. a completely bald one, but I had a girl once I think say a bald one looks like a five-year-old kid. This is, this is, <laughs> I hate that comment. People say it's sick if you like a bald vagina because it looks like a five-year-old child. Well, then I'm never going to shave my face again. If you kiss now, a man without a beard, then you're a but pedophile. But I used to. I used to, and I thought no, it was it's called sexy. It's called evolution. But and and we found that you, you don't run around pe- without clothes on. You used to need to protect your vagina from things like Jason. No, it was to keep the but, flies out and things like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah but now you don't need to because you wear pants, so get rid of that shit. Get it all off. It's uh, disgusting. Like the strip? Yeah. The whole lot, it's take, disgusting. Take the Mr. T off. It's not like a Your thick Your vagina is disgusting. Yeah. It's not like a stash on my vagina. It's just a thin, like, here it is. I bought, I bought nose hair clippers the other day. This Remington nose hair His girlfriends never look so good. <laughs> and and I I went I went in there and cleaned it out and it was I couldn't stop. And then those ones that twirl it? No, it's not a twirler. It's like a like little clippers. And I couldn't stop. I started doing other parts of my body, and I just started going down. Do you just shove it up your nose? Because I'm actually interested in that one. Oh, it's incredible. I've never trimmed. I'm a, I'm a sit in the car and pull out and cry. Type of guy. <laughs> That's pretty painful. Oh, yeah, yeah. I man up about it. Your nose starts running. Your eyes start running. Yeah, yeah. That one where you sneeze afterwards. Mm. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I thought, I thought I was... <laughs> you ever gotten like a weird mutant one that's here, but it's connected way deep? No. I no. thought I was pretty tough till I poured salt into, oh, yeah. uh, into that callus today. And I never have. I've never had one where I pull it out up my nose and it comes out from my cheek. I've only had ones no, that... No, that no, I mean like... I'm in the back. I know. It's up disgusting, high. Edward. It's, Edward, it's disgusting. <laughs> Look at it now. It's, it's, that's gross. That's, that's a, Yeah, that's a. You finger girl in Africa, you're dead. <laughs> that's what your hand looks like now. I had calluses on my hand. I cut them off and poured salt in them. I love that a man in a relationship works works out hard enough that he can rip the skin off his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once you're in a relationship, you don't you have care to work maybe 10, 10 push ups. I don't know. I, I, I've, I've, I've lost my mind. I, this, this CrossFit shit, it's. No, it's because you like to look good. No, it's as it yourself. It's, it's more health. No. Yeah, it's not vanity. Mm, it is. No, I swear to God. Then why did you shave your chest? Uh, that's vanity. <laughs> that's got nothing to do with health. I didn't shave my why chest. Why did you I, buy a clipper I, and I, do your clippers. nose? I did my nose. I did my, my balls. I got down to the balls. I fucking, I went, it, it's, it's, I couldn't stop with this razor. It was too much fun. What is it? I might get one. I'll show you. We can, be ra- <laughs> we can be razor buddies. It's, un- you just. Just borrow his. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> No, I don't. I want one too. It's it's amazing. Is this a plug-in or is there a battery? What's going? Yeah, on? there's a battery in it. I every time I buy a razor, it's got that stupid plug that no one uses in the bathroom. That two prong one that no one has. You can never recharge it. I don't know why that two prong one exists. What, what are you talking? You know about? the bathroom plug that's different with the yeah, like with one, the, one side is rounded, the other one's flat yeah. It's on got circular prongs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know that one that they, there's a special seen. bathroom one that you see it in like four hotels in your entire life. And these, yeah, it's happened to me twice. Very disappointing. So I use them once until the battery runs out and I throw them away. I, uh, I could return it, but I'm lazy. I can't believe <laughs> we're talking about razors, but uh, the, the have you used the Mach 3? Uh, I've, been a, I've been a Mach 3. But wait, what's for, the Mach 3? Tur- not the turbo, the... Uh, the one that vibrates. Yeah, the one yeah, that vibrates. Yeah, I can't, I can't be putting anything There's in the not, That's a gimmick. 
Yeah, I don't want to use that. You can use it as a vibrator, though. Yeah, if you want to cut her up. <laughs> <laughs> you never use one of those vibrators. I think, I think he meant for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you ever use the vibrating razor on a woman? Awesome. Lily, have you ever tried it? No, I haven't. Do you use Look. like a girl's razor? Girl's razors are the same, but they have a pink handle. Yeah. They're exactly I, the same. I use a girl's razor. Yeah. yeah. Poof. Boring. Yeah. Contrary to proper belief. Oh, Do you wax your asshole, Lily? No. You Why sh- would I wax my asshole? Because a girl like you should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as hairy as you portray me to be. Girl your European origin. I am very hairless. Thank you. I'm just saying that there's nothing like I've been down and with girls that have, have a hemorrhoids. beautiful vagina and then you lift the legs up and there's a hairy asshole. You just let yourself down. It's like doing the front garden and then you go to the back of the house and it's all weeds and everything. And you're not going to buy that house, are you? I haven't had any complaints. No one. See, this is the thing. Men are nice people. No man's ever going <laughs> to. No man. Uh, no, we men are way more complimentary than women. Women will, <laughs> women will say to their friends, that guy has a small dick or whatever. And then when you break up, they go, and by the way, you got a small cock, right? A man's never, even if he breaks up, he's not going to go, and by the way, you have a hairy asshole. We'll just leave it be. We're good people. So, dark, you know, no one's going to. Or a no, dark one. Do you have one that needs to be bleached? No. I no, guess I any asshole would. can be bleached. You have a face I think that that's needs relative. to be bleached. Come on. <laughs> Jesus, Jim. Dude, your mouth, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you have a face that needs Shut to be bleached. <laughs> But I don't understand the bleaching on the Come on the backside. On. You'd, yeah. have to, you'd have to sit over a mirror to find out. Yeah. Well, you'd, I'm you'd sure. You'd have to do work it. to find out if you need to have that done. But, yeah, but if you're in porn, you could see in videos. You, I think it happens when you film yourself fucking one day and then you show it back to your girlfriend. She's like, that is a dark asshole I have. Yeah, but I, is it really? I just don't understand why it, people have Is it like, safe in long-term health? Explain it's chemicals. I mean, they're using a chemical to discolor your anus. Kind of like the chemicals you use to put in people's hair? Yeah. No, actually, uh, we broke... We bro- <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you really are. You're just a broken man. Molecular reprogramming. Right. How do you know that the chemicals they put in the ass are the same thing? How, how, about, how do you know they're not fucking bleaching people's assholes with soy? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, was, I asked a well, question. Well, but, but, but I made no assumptions. And I'm so worried. Was, aren't you destroying people's hair? No, like actually, you, no. They, they, tell us why. Because <coughs> we don't use um, ammonia. Because the first time apples. ever in the history of hair, they've made a hair dye that actually healthens your hair. No, there's a there's a hundred percent organic one out there that another company has that's pretty good. But so why don't you work for them? <laughs> <laughs> Are they not hiring the homeless? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, by the way, Jason, we deleted, Ernie deleted out that stuff from last week about you talking to, you know, about the drug dealers breaking down the doors and everything at your house. And, and we, what? And we had it deleted out. And then after the show, we told you how funny it was. And you're like, okay, keep it in. And then Ernie deleted it anyway, which is against the rules. Because Jim yeah, and no, I, you Jim that and I went are the only mental. That was the best bit. Jim and I are the only ones that have editing. Uh, so, what, what, are you, what are you trying authority. to say to me? So, what are we saying? We're going to release it <laughs> as okay. a bonus episode. We're going to release it. Why yeah. do you care? You got kicked out. I know. I said, I don't care. You got All right, evicted. yeah, release that as a bonus little one-minute clip on Wednesday in yeah. between the two. Yeah, so you're going to get to hear there's going to be a bonus in this episode. One and the next one. Of, uh, Can you wait a week? That, w- that will be a week. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will be a week. This okay. isn't live. Is it inadmissible in court? Well, just because I'm there for, you know, I just don't want to have do, awkward do you, moments. Do you think you're going to talk your way out of your eviction? <laughs> No, I just don't want to have think, awkward. You, you, gotta, you, you want to make it a good eviction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to leave on good terms. <laughs> you want to leave on good terms in case he has another place opening up. No, he's a nice he guy. He might think to himself, you, he you might want, go, you, hey, remember that guy I evicted? I might get him back for my new property. <laughs> you want to make friends with the guy that you're that's No, evicting. I just don't want to make an enemy. Okay. Why? You won't see him again. You've been evicted. It's, yeah, I see him. I see him again. You see him a lot now because you live next door no, to him. No, like there's a lot of circles that are that touch. He's, right. in, he's in one of your Google Plus circles? No, but I mean, I do see him around. So, you know, there's no reason to draw blood. We're not drawing blood. We're All just right. saying. But that. he's already drawn blood. He evicted you. <laughs> that, that's a pretty definite <laughs> opinion of you. And you that know what? Given. When, but when you get kicked out, when you finally have to move out, you better fucking take that door with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let, fill you in on a story. I don't know fill what I'm you in on a story. Know. Fill you in on a story. <laughs> he lived without a door for four months. <laughs> A front he's, door? He's do- <laughs> yeah, a front door. A front door. His door got smashed in and he didn't find the time to replace it for months and now he can't figure out why the guy evicted him. It's just come out of nowhere. 
He was such a good tenant. A doorless tenant, but a good tenant. <laughs> and nothing was stolen? He, he doesn't nothing. have anything. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> He's got a massage table and a, d- a depressed dog. How did you stay in your house? He has a dog that's so no, bad at being there's a another guide door dog that invites goes, people there's in. Like, because it used to be a one bedroom and they made it into like this little studio thing. So there's another door between the doors. Our doors like are, door, our doors door, are... door. So there's like a door and then there was a door that was missing and then, and then there's another door that was always there. But how much is a door? Well, I was uh, trying to get a free one. Uh, I was. Li- he went on Craigslist. No, I was going to get a nice out. one. I was going to get a nice one. He couldn't believe there just wasn't a section called free doors. <laughs> there, no, you can find them. People are always doing remodels and they put them out, you know, like a did nice you, steel did, door. Did you find it? No, steel I ended up. Door. Yeah, I wanted, to get a, I wanted to get a good door. How did the door, door, door yeah. someone kicked it in? There's two stories. Yeah. So anyways. Let him, let him choose which one he wants to Let's just continue tell. on. Okay. So the, so the door fell off the hinges. So the door is <laughs> fucked up. So the door wanted to leave him as well. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Jason. We'll, no, so we'll just I, I, butt in when funny. I, <laughs> there was a tsunami. I just wanted to get a, like a, a good door, you know, because what most people want in life. Because the door that was up there was like not a structural. It wasn't an entry door. It was like easy to get through. So I wanted as to, easy as no door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I understand now. Yeah, but no door gives the illusion of what type of psycho. Which yeah, is yeah. Not, yeah. Obviously, there's <laughs> trouble here. You don't want to go into that guy's place. <laughs> So anyways, I ended up having to go get another non cuz I wanted to cuz like the steel ones are like over 100, you know. What are these steel doors? Like an entry door, a fireproof door that, you know, is sh- more secure than like a door that goes between rooms in a house. What There's you, two types. Have we got a steel door in this house? Well, you have a solid wood door which is Which is what most people have. Right. Or or they have the the steel or aluminum, you and, know. And what did you settle for in the end? Styrofoam? Yeah, pretty much like that. Beads. <laughs> a whole lot of gaffer tape wrapped together. <laughs> this Balsa. Is, this is the second episode where we've talked about the door. Oh, yeah. no, I love the door. The door's, like my, fa- the door's the door. my favorite subject. The I'm d- going to keep talking until I get the, bored. The door's, the, the door's the new grandpa's bat. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, though? I was thinking if somebody went to rob him and they walk in, hey, think about him in his house. He sleeps naked on a massage table and he keeps a, he keeps a Shaolin bat beside his bed. And he has spears in the room. <laughs> yeah, he has spears. So if anyone walked in his place, there's no fucking way they would stay and steal anything. They'd be like, I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but, but evidently they did break in. He has no door. Yeah. But, mm. but when you were renting originally... Did you give the semblance? Can't call it renting yeah, yeah. if you're not paying rent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, let's lose that term loosely. <laughs> uh, like, when you're uh, squatting. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like loosely. When you, were, when you were in this abode. <laughs> it's kind of like a cave because it doesn't have a door. It was a lot like a cave. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it's a cave. I, I, it was kind of a miserable place. I'm actually happy this happened. It just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey. You know, honestly, no. Because like, the it, just, great outdoors it, it just forces me to move on and do more. You know, that's the way it goes. Cardboard boxes don't have doors. <laughs> <laughs> I like the outdoors. You no. do. You if any of our listeners, because he loves this kind of stuff, if any of our listeners out there want Jason to come live with them, <laughs> Jason, would you'd take them up on it, wouldn't you? No. Just yes, probably. you it's would. In Venice. Just, just wander the land. Well, if it's in Venice, through. you know, and it's a room to rent, maybe, yeah. But I mean, if, what if they'll let you stay there for free? Well, I'm not looking for that, but, you know. You'll take it. I do chores. I don't care. Yeah, maybe someone will give you a suit with suspenders. Yeah, suit with <laughs> John, do you have a back house or anything? I don't. Do you have a yeah. garage? I'm going to say I don't. What you, have, <laughs> what you need is a garage and no sense of fear. <laughs> <laughs> and a steel door. Because no, he won't stay and, there if there's no steel doors. And, <laughs> and, and earplugs. Do you snore? No, but he just talks a lot of shit that'll make you crazy. He, not, <laughs> he, he doesn't know if he snores. No one's ever slept next to him. <laughs> <laughs> That one hit home. He was angry about that. No, one. actually, Lindsay said I snored. So, how, how is your love life at the moment? Uh, um, Absolutely. I don't really have a love life. Are you any girls on the horizon? I love life. Is there a girl uh, on the horizon? Is there one that you're wooing, uh, like through texts or something? Or John, hang out, John yeah. single. Would you like to go out and try to pick up some women with John? The two of you could work as a team. 
John could go, I write for the family guy and you could go, have you seen my mean guitar skills? <laughs> John could say, I, uh, I own a house in uh, LA and you could say, I own a door. <laughs> well, that would be a lot. <laughs> he owns the door. He just doesn't have a yeah, house the, around it. You know, Wait, so you, you finally know you got the door say. just in time not to live there? <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's why I was procrastinating. You know you as soon as I put that door up. You know what you should do, right? You, just, you, should, you should go to a girl, I own a house, and as she's walking away, go, portion. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should build you a tree house with your door. <laughs> There's a, there's a treehouse over on uh, <laughs> over by the canal. You know what? That treehouse has a door. <laughs> I was just talking to Crazy Peter, you know, across oh, the way. God. Crazy. Is that his nickname? I want him to come over tonight because he was just telling me, he goes, I was walking by today. He goes, dude, I just saw the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I go, what was it? He goes, I went to this vineyard in Malibu and I saw a camel give birth. <laughs> <laughs> like what then he made me come in and watch it a video of it he goes i had my camera i filmed the whole when thing. that happened did one of the humps go down <laughs> <laughs> no but what i was wondering is like why why were there camels on a was vineyard good. Was good. i thought it was good too and uh, show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so then he was telling me his his girlfriend lives up in topanga canyon she's got like kind of a tree house and those two are getting married and they're probably going to get a house together you should take her you should take her cabin go up. Go live in a tree house? Yeah. Actually, I could go live in Udi's cabin probably. Where's there. that? He's got a cabin up there. In Topanga? Uh-huh. Yeah, that'd be good for you. You could walk around know. without your shoes on with your big meaty feet and have your spear gun. He needs out. to be in walking distance to everything as he doesn't have a car or a You can license. hang out with Andy Dick all the time. Oh, yeah, Andy. Andy's <laughs> up there. Andy would let you live in the shed with him. <laughs> have you guys ever used Andy Dick on the family guy? They took the piss out of him. I think so, him. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they took <laughs> the piss out of him when there was a nightclub that got very popular. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then Andy and Dick then, And then all of a sudden, Andy Dick, and then the nightclub but I think sucked. he, I think he recorded himself. I think he came in. There. Yeah. We've had Andy. He sat in that chair right there, and um, and he masturbated upstairs in my bed. Really? Yeah, really. For, for the show or just because? No, no, afterwards, we went out and got drunk, and he came back, and Eddie wasn't here, and he used Eddie's room. I think that's completely reasonable. But why would you ever masturbate drunk? That just seems like a lot of work. That's all I ever do. <laughs> But you don't go, I went out and I really got drunk, so I had to masturbate. No, I love masturbating when you're drunk. No, me, I pass out. I get abusive <laughs> with myself. <laughs> right, but it's just going to take you a lot longer, and at the end, you just feel terrible. No, I always come when I'm drunk. It's when I'm sober, and I know how fucking horrible my cock looks that I can't enjoy it. <laughs> There's a lot of scars and injuries yeah, and yeah, it's terrible. scabs. And scabs and shaped like a pyramid. It is shaped like a pyramid. I just, But you went to pair so quickly. That was interesting. <laughs> I, I had a, He's back I to Lily. He wants to know why Lily an apricot, But it was immediately, what does it look like? It looks like a pear. An apricot <laughs> has a little line in it and it's covered in a small amount of fuzz. Okay, an apricot then. An apricot's a nice round Don't thing. Don't get it's forced into making your apricots vagina come from Armenia, apricot. by the way. Oh, oh yeah. she's Armenian. Is it what? Yeah. They come from Armenia. Oh, I thought Apric they were meteor. They, that's where they or originated. The Latin name I'm for sure, apricot. I bet you Wikipedia, it. Roy. Would you stop with your <laughs> nationalism? It's just... It's you guys yeah, so you've got the Kardashians and apricots. Snow. Let's have yeah. fucking National Armenia Day. <laughs> what is, does anything I'm, good come from Armenia? Me. What else? Apricots. Pomegranates. Pomegranates are pretty Pomegranates good. Pomegranates are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'll take yeah, that. I'll, I'll take that. that. Superfood. Mm -hmm. Genocide. Genocide. Oh, <laughs> you know about Genocide's also... Well... <laughs> He knew about your people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my people? Yeah. Uh, Many um, hair. Lots of good hair. Pear-shaped vaginas. Uh huh. That's another Armenian uh -huh. export. Mafia. Oh, it's mafia. Well, mafia. They've got a good mafia. Yeah, they do. Feet. <laughs> There's a question <laughs> on Yahoo Answers that says, "Can you tell me five good things about Armenia?" Feet that look like claws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're looking on the computer right now on Yahoo yeah, Answers. That, that's not. Exciting. Land yeah, someone, yes. someone's just said an answer that you could say about anything in the world. Mm -hmm. Name me good things about Australia. Hey, the Armenians, places, the people, the Armenians history, the culture. That we That's came from nothing. aliens. Huh? I mean, there are some Armenians that still believe we came from uh, aliens. We have like a really old observatory. There's some no, people, not some people who still Zenu. believe you came from aliens. But yeah, I mean, well, so there's, I think there's... Uh, have American you got any like old like pyramid type things that could have been made by the aliens? Yeah, uh, I want to. Uh, 
I want to thank all the guys that have been donating to the show. Jim and I were talking about it earlier, and it's like we're not making money off the show. It's not like we take money. All the money we get goes back into the show to pay for stuff. Uh, we, we, we don't. St- we still have not broken even. We don't even fucking show. pay to buy Jason food ever. So, um, and it's getting less. I'm not going to feed him anymore. But tough love. But we're trying to keep the show going. So everyone that donates, we thank you. And there's people that have donated a tremendous amount of money, and like. Those people are fucking awesome, but you don't have to, like, I don't want to say no, but you know, like if you can't afford it, don't do it. But you, you cunts that listen constantly and don't give 20 bucks. I mean, Jesus, just give like $20. Cause there's guys like this guy, Josh Mancuso, who's donated three separate times and he gives about $250 every time. Uh, he wrote us a really nice note and it was, uh, it was about uh, basically. That means another donation just came in. If you heard that ping, <laughs> he's talking about how shitty his life has been and why he listens to the show. And in it, he mentioned how many times um, it, it was pretty much about Jason. <laughs> so, sure, we'll so read, he said, read it. Hey guys, just wanted to take a moment and say that I'm one of your greatest fans. I know it sounds pretentious, but I'd like to know why it is I enjoy you guys so much. I know by doing this, I'm giving Jim and Eddie ammo to attack me. But hey, my life does not suck as much as Jason's. <laughs> I'm a 32-year-old white male. My mother died when Ah, I was 10. One of those. (laughs) My mother died when I was 10 from cancer. My father died suddenly from a heart attack a year ago. I'm the legal guardian of my brother who's deaf and developmentally disabled. All right, do we start ripping into him now? If you want to start on those. You can rip into the brother all you want. He can't hear you. All right, at (laughs) at this point... Please look at Jason and tell him he sucks. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> and now I'm doing it in sign language so the deaf guy knows. <laughs> I, have been a substitute, I have been substitute teaching for the past three years while trying to get my type 10 certificate so I can teach special education. Don't ask me for advice as to how to train Jason to be a productive member of society. I have my bachelor's degree in social work, but if Lalit can't make a dent in Jason's psyche, no one can. <laughs> I listen to the podcast and find myself reflecting on some of the fucked up shit I've done in my life. In all honesty, you provide a demented type of therapy. Someone like me can listen and think, wow, I need to stop pissing and moaning or I will end up like Jason. (laughs) I know I mentioned this before, but I truly believe Jason is the genesis of the 21st century retard. (laughs) He is not mentally disabled, exclamation point. This is a guy who works with them all the time. (laughs) He chooses to exist in the manner he portrays on the podcast. I'm willing to bet that if I ever found my way to L.A., I could find the infamous coffee shop. And then he put in parentheses, I just need to look for the hot woman with the purple hair behind the counter. (laughs) That's Meredith, everyone. (laughs) And portray myself as a wandering tourist to Jason. After a day of following the shaved Bigfoot around Venice, I would be left feeling better about myself. Jason, you're an example for the rest of humanity. Don't give up or you'll end up like this guy. Send that on to fine Southern gentlemen and have them make a shirt up with his picture. For those reasons, I do not want to see Jason kill him, kill himself. Let him live. Just try not to let that fucker smoke away my donations. Get something nice for Machete. Keep the laughs coming, guys, and I will proudly label myself a talking shithead. And then he mentions if we're in Chicago to come visit him. That was very sweet. And then he says, P.S., tell the rest of your listeners to stop being cheap cunts and donate. This is my third time, fags. Keep the show going. And how much has he donated? Like 750 total. He's donated 750 and he works as a developmental teacher. But mind you, he's got all that dead parent inheritance. (laughs) (laughs) You have one donor and you're attacking him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no there's some other guys that have donated. Um, Adam, Adam McKee. I, I hope I get your name right. Thank you. If I didn't, go fuck yourself. Zach Krinner. Uh, that was a nice donation. Melissa Corbett. Melissa Corbett. A chick. A chick. Yeah, we got a big donation. That sounds like a hot girl as well, Melissa Corbett. Yeah, I don't know. You Stay- know where sometimes you can see by a name, Melissa Corbett. I'd be in for that. Yeah, there's a there's a certain names out there that any girl's named that are hot. You know? Corby, 68, just born in 1968. You're not hot, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you for the money. <laughs> what, what's, what's your cutoff of hot? What's the number got to be? Oh, you got to be fucking in the 80s 84? and above. You can't, be, you can't be born in the 70s, the 60s. Come on. Lalit, what's your year? 84. 80, 85. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. 85 is the cutoff now. Jason, would you fuck a woman? If you found a met a woman who's quite hot, you just 50 and above, <laughs> would you have that relationship? She was really hot. Yeah. Uh, if I liked her, yeah, why not? Can't have kids. She's in her 50s. That's okay. 
But I, that's you said you wouldn't go out with a lady if she couldn't have kids. Well, I mean, if she had HIV. Good point. If yeah. I was gonna, if I was, if I was gonna get into something with a fifty-year-old, I wouldn't have an expectation of children. All right, just mm. to stop. Um, I have you to play do, the hand you dealt. To, it's the same way how women also, if they get involved with a guy without a house, they don't have an expectation of anything. I think we thanked everybody that's been. Can you scroll down? How about Joshua Mancuso? That's him. That's he, the guy that just. Wrote well, he's the our best one. He's our only yeah. good donator. The, I I like the ones we've got here, and I'm not going to belittle this person for doing it. But there, we got we got Alex Matthews there, who donated eleven dollars and twenty six cents. Just. Why? With, which, well, why would you go twenty? But no, he also uh, donated another time twenty six dollars and eighty three cents. Oh, so the, the, oh, Alex Matthews, you get a shout out. Thank, yeah, thank Alex you, Matthews. Thank you good. for your random numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the randomness, Alex. Like, you know, Alex gets drunk and just goes eleven. Nah, fuck it, twenty three cents. <laughs> you know what? You know what's even better if he's probably like Jason and he just goes into his bank account and goes. I got twenty six dollars and eighty three cents. I'll give it to Jim and Eddie. <laughs> My question is: Does Jason have another podcast? Can we go he goes to where they say nice things about him. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Jason wanted to start his own podcast, which I, I did. I played it for you, Jim, didn't I? Ian Hearn, that's a big one. Ian, what? Kelly Webb, Kelly Webb. Now, Kelly Webb is at Geek Pie. Is she a hot girl, Kelly Webb? Kelly Webb, uh, let's say, she donated. Let's let's say yeah, yes, she's hot. There's a guy. How do you know? Terry if we're butchering your names, we're sorry, but we're not that smart. Greg Maroney, Jessica he, he's Karras. a good guy. He helps out a lot. Uh, Ian Heron, thank you. Ian Watt, uh, and oh, this is dude. I've seen uh, emails from Lassie Mome. He's from like Denmark or something. And he's a big fan of the show, and he writes messages all the time. Kyle Taylor, who donated one cent, I know, sent, I know you're being funny, but that would have cost you a fee on your card. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. That cost you like a dollar or something to actually put that through. So no, who's the fool now? No, that's Kyle Taylor. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. And uh, Derek Jarman. That's a really good one. Derek Jarman. You're the man. Thank you. Derek Jarman. Nick, oh, Colin Webb. I know what you're getting at. 666. Nick Bradley. See? How about if somebody's listening right now? The only people that are finding this interesting are the people who are saying their names. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what is it? Reading Rainbow? No, it was at the, uh, I'm too old. The Jerry Lewis telephone. No, when you look through the thing and I see Jerry. and Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, Romper Room. Romper Room. Oh, is that what we're doing right now? Well, I see. I uh, love Romper Room. <laughs> Miss Helena was in Australia. We had a different verb. Gee, oh, yeah. yeah. But there was always Get names. Miss Helena. Miss Helena, Romper Room, Australia. Up Wait, let me Bird. thank I'll a couple more real quick. Chris, Chris Sadowski, thank you very much. And uh, Nick Bradley, that was a good one. Nick Bradley, very good, thank you. I mean, some of these people, like, I, I really, I can't believe how much you support the show, and, and it is because of you guys that we get to keep doing this. Otherwise, we would have quit a long Go time ago. Miss Helena. Helena? Helena, Romper Room. John Viner, yeah, that was a good go, donation. Thanks, John Viner. I see you donated. No, I go romper room. You must be loaded now. Oh, just, just you know. Is it? Yeah, you writers make tons of fucking money. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They do fine, but they don't make actor money. Where is this? You book? were driving a BMW Seven Series. It was a lease. There she is. <laughs> there she is. The the one there. That picture along in the middle. That one there. You thought now, she I, was... Well, I was a child. I had fond memories of that woman. Let's see what she looks like. When you say fond memories, what does that uh, mean? She had big tits and she was like... But if you're a child, you should be looking at those things. <laughs> that woman, that's not an attractive woman. <laughs> but when you're a kid, your brain's different. There she is. There's, a, there's an old picture of her, but she that wasn't what she looked like then. <laughs> was she the Aussie version or both? She's the Aussie version, yeah. Okay. Why is Tyrese coming up under Miss Helena Romper? <laughs> The internet is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you don't make a lot of money as a writer. No, I, 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 you know, you do fine as a writer. I'm not complaining. Would you rather be getting on planes every week and going to places like Kansas and Omaha yeah, but and doing stand up comedy? You didn't sell. You didn't sell stand up comedy there well. You just did the bad bit. Would you rather be having sex with random chits in Kansas and Cleveland? Uh, potentially. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. but then you mentioned the plane thing and you made it sound awful. Comedy's no, but you know, he doesn't because he's like, hey, I'm in Australia. I'm having a great time. It's wonderful here. And you get to meet people and it's exciting. You have different experiences. I, I work in a room with the same 16 people year after year. Yeah, it's just, enjoyable, but it's, you know, it's a different life. I, I guess it's the grass is always greener. Like I'm at the end of my rope with the stand up part. So 
Yeah, but it's also where you are in your life. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying like if you're 22, the greatest thing in the world is you just want to travel greatest all job, time. Yeah. Greatest job in the world in your mid-20s. Yeah, though, it coming. was. Yeah. It was. Uh, I always felt like I was beating the system. Going, greatest job in the world. Going to South Africa and China and Dubai. It was and, that whole thing. I listened to my parents traveled the world, but they backpacked and they did it in hostels and stuff like that. And I did it in five-star hotels. Yeah. And so it was fucking S- awesome. Sitting in hot tubs, I was paying for it. People would come in, you know, do gigs, and you'd be in a nice hotel. You know, I, I still had no money in my early twenties, but I still traveled the world for free, which is nice. And you get more material out of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a party. You're always going to a party. I remember at at a certain point, it was like I'd have to hide from people after shows because I was like, I can't drink anymore. Yeah, I can't because yeah. you're every night you go to a different place. And and for you, you're doing a show, but for them, it's a party. So afterwards, they want you to come to the party with them. And then you're like, all right, I just one more night. I can do it one more <clears throat> night. And it gets exhausting. And you're just like, I can't. And then after three shots, you're like, I can do it again. Yeah, that's the weird thing about being drunk. Drunk has no uh, has no forward thinking, does it? Drunk Drunk lives in the moment. Yeah. I remember just going to shows and being so tired from like being on a plane the night before. And it'd be like, I'd have three hours sleep, get on a plane, just be a mess. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna be able to do the show. And I, will coffee do it? No, coffee won't do it. I know it'll do it. Six shots of tequila. If I do that, I'll be ready to go again. (laughs) And all of a sudden after six shots, you're wide awake, like ready to fucking go again. And you got 12 new hours ahead of you and, all kinds of shit to get into. And now it's like, I don't even want one. Like if somebody sends me a shot and I tell the bartender, make them fake. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you, so I'm just trying to backtrack. So you, you drink a lot and that's part of this, I'm getting in good shape? No, I used to do this. <laughs> no, no, no used I used to. to do this. I don't, I don't drink much anymore. I don't, I, I, it's rare I have more than a couple of drinks now. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's really rare. So you think you're going to make, make up for all the years? That's what I keep thinking. I was just talking to. Uh, I'll Bri- just bike him off. I'll go backwards on the bike. And uh, I was just talking to Bri- <laughs> Brian McCarthy, who's our. I think next it does guest. work that way, though. Yeah. I do. I think you can because they say you can regenerate your liver. What are the What's the one you can't? I do? regenerated my liver. Your liver, you can do. I think it's your lungs. Kidneys, you, you can. Nothing. Your lungs when they're fucked, they're fucked. Yeah, your lungs are fucked, and I didn't smoke, so my my liver is probably back to normal. When we used to be at Stand Up New York, it was ridiculous. They had a fan, like it was supposed to be an uptake fan for all this because everyone was smoking in the clubs. So we were trapped in this room and there was like an uptake fan that just blew the air in a circle. Yeah. So the smoke just went in the same room in a circle, but it's like, oh, we took care of it. It's got a charcoal filter in there. It's <laughs> but it's like you, you smoked by just being a comic for years. Yeah, before the anti-smoking laws. Yeah. I mean, I was in a club every night, but worse than that, free alcohol. Yes. Like I would go in. I remember Stand Up New York, and I hope no one from there listened. Well, then the owner's gone now. There's new no, oh, new owners. I would go into the bar and just go, uh, I need four Jack and Cokes. I need to, like, I'd bring like 12 friends and just order. And then at the end, I would just tip. And the tip would be like $20 for 100 drinks. Because <laughs> so I would have like so many friends. And I remember one night even like feeling like we just drank thousands of dollars worth of alcohol and i look at the bartender and i go how bad is it and he goes uh give me 60 bucks <laughs> i was like we just drank thousands of dollars and i'm like if the owner ever found out he'd stab me <laughs> well it's essentially a bottle of alcohol what do you mean i'm saying like you know it's just the, the, the alcohol markup's always ridiculous yeah, it's yeah, true yeah. Too. um would, if you have any plugs you'd like to give uh, I'll be performing at the, no, I, uh, what do I have coming up? I, I have, well, it's a year away, but I'm in this movie, Ted, that, uh, is Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis. Oh, and, fantastic. Uh, and awesome. they're editing it right now. We shot this summer and uh, it's coming out. What do you play summer. in it? I play a guy who works at the rent-a-car company with Mark Wahlberg. I play a foreign guy who ducks like this. Ah! Mm-hmm. And, uh, That's he's, good. he's an idiot and, uh, and he's sort of the nemesis at work, at least for Mark Wahlberg. If Mark doesn't get his crap together, that I, that I'll get the uh, promotion. So. What's Ted about? He just uh, told you. No, it's about no. Ted, Ted's about a, a boy gets a, a teddy bear when he's young and he has no friends and he decides at ten years old that he wishes it was real and the wish comes true. And is then, this about Jason? It might be, and it's basically it cuts to twenty five years later and you've still got this talking teddy bear that's now foul mouthed and won't leave you and 
smokes pot all day. Well, maybe you know what? Now that <laughs> this I, is kind of a good story. I like this. <laughs> it's like, wait a yeah. second. This sounds like a pretty smart bear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's Mark Wahlberg and a, and a CGI bear that Seth MacFarlane's doing the voice of. Ah, uh, so that's ready? what I got. What do you got going on? Uh, you can catch me actually down in San Diego. I'm going to be at a storage uh, bin. <laughs> can I no. open? <laughs> no, I'm doing a show in San Diego. Uh, it's on my website. I also have what coming day? up. Uh, I don't know, Jason. Um, I uh, you'll have to look on my website on eddieif.com. And I'm also going to be in Atlanta at the Laughing Skull, uh, which is a great club. You enjoyed the Laughing Skull, right, Jim? Love the Laughing Skull. Yeah. So I'll be at the Laughing Skull first week in September. Uh, check out my website. Come see me there. And uh, Jim, you're going to be. I will be um, on holidays right now. Um, so I won't be doing any work. But I have two big uh, gigs that I have a lot of tickets to sell for for uh, uh, the Nokia um, Theatre, no, uh, Club Nokia in LA uh, in November. And coming up um, September, I think, 16th, I'll be doing two shows at the Wilbur Theatre. And it's a real big theatre. So uh, if you want to come and see me in Boston, come and see me then. And everyone asks us all the time. I always get emails. I know Jim gets them. They say, is Jason coming with you? To no. This? No. The answer is I get no. I asked, is Jason here? Like, yeah. Yeah. like I'd fucking take him somewhere. Yeah. Um, I don't have a leash big enough for his neck. Yeah, they don't let that size animal go in cargo. Get my uh, Australian tickets, though, too, at uh, alist.com.au. Thank you. Talking.